हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम प्रोफेसर इप्शिता बंसल फ्रॉम बीपीएस पी वेमेंस यूनिवर्सिटी सोनीपत हरियाणा टुडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द मॉड्यूल इंडियन थॉट ट्रेडिशंस ऑफ द पेपर इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव्स ऑन ह्यूमन क्वालिटी डेवलपमेंट बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द इंडियन थाट ट्रेडिशंस and learn the applications of these traditions for human quality development the foundation of india is woven with indian thought traditions these traditions are thoughts from ancient scriptures and from ancient sources and leaders nonetheless these traditions are actually thought to provoke introspection and discussions and are followed even today in the 21st century the indian thought traditions are of much value as it imparts the value based learning in each and every individual despite age region or religion these traditions have been passed from generations to generations and are deeply rooted in the indian way of life if these traditions are followed in a proper way with the right perspective it will help in removing all the hindrances and obstacles from the path of success and happiness it will also lead to humans being totally quality developed of their selves and their surroundings although there are many many indian thought traditions but we will be discussing here only a few these are syadvada tradition yoga tradition muniyati tradition rishi tradition gandhian tradition confluence tradition life tradition arth shastra tradition healing tradition and spiritual tradition syadvada tradition it is helpful in understanding various view points of different people on a single concern matter thus it is also called as kathan chidvada syadvada talks about the multiple perspectives and a number of possibilities of thoughts for the solution of the problems it provides the rational and sound expression to it in the form of saptabhangi seven fold pred- prediction including verification refusal and expressions etc in jainism it is said that syad is required to avoid the confusion and to know the view point of all so that the correct and final conclusion can be achieved therefore syadvada tradition talks about looking at a problem with several perspectives people look at problems or issues with a certain view point they justify their own thoughts either negative or positive this can be the result of the half knowledge or due to looking at an issue from just one point of view our day to day workplace dealings or other worldly dealings avoid the word syad which is very important as it helps in understanding things from various perspectives and viewpoints it is said that any question can be answered in two basic ways that is yes or no this style of answering is known as bhang precisely there are at most seven bhang possibilities and thus for an accurate examination of things there can be seven view points thus the seven different ways of judgment are used for arriving at any conclusion this approach also reminds us of the ancient story of six blind men and elephant in this story there were six blind men living in the village one day the other villagers informed those blind men that today there is an elephant in the village the blind men were having no idea that how 
an elephant looks like. Despite the fact that they will not be able to view that elephant, they wish to touch and feel the elephant. Thus, as a result, all blind men touch the elephant. The first blind man touched the leg of the elephant and said that the elephant is like a pillar. Another man who touched the tail said it is like a rope. The third man who touched the trunk of the elephant interrupted the second one and said that it is like a thick branch of a tree or a giant snake. Oh no, my friend, it is like a big hand fan, said the fourth man who touched the ear of the elephant. The fifth one touched the belly of the elephant and said, it is like a huge wall. The last, that is the sixth blind man, touched the tusk of the elephant and declared that it is a spear. As all were having different views, they began to argue and everyone tried to insist that he was right. A wise man was passing from that place and witnessed that argument and asked all six men the reason behind their argument. On this they reply that we all are not able to agree on each other's point. We all have a different perspective of how the elephant actually looks like. The wise man peacefully explained to them that all were correct. The reason behind the different viewpoint was that they all touched the elephant's different body parts. The wise man said, the elephant possesses all the features described by you all. Listening to this, everyone was happy as all six men were right. Thus, there is some truth behind the words of every individual. Sometimes, other may feel that truth and even sometimes not because of the different perspectives. So, despite arguing, we need to understand the perspective of another person also. Therefore, Syadvada tradition explains that the truth can be stated in various ways. We need to combine that multiple perspectives before giving any conclusion. Thus, this ancient thought and tradition also educate us to be tolerant, patient and understanding towards other and their viewpoints. It also helps to live in harmony with the people of diverse thoughts and nature. Yoga Tradition The yoga has its origin in Sanskrit. The Sanskrit word of yoga is yuj. It means joining bringing harmony to body and mind relationship. In the ancient terminology, it is joining the self. Yoga tradition talks about bringing control over the self. Control is in two senses. First one is the power to focus on any important subject and a capacity to remain quiet for some time. Yoga helps us to develop physical level that is it generates energy in the body which helps to work more efficiently by directing it in the right way. Mental level that is it enhances the power of thinking and creativity of the mind. Intellectual level it increases the power of sharpness and comprehensive development of the intellect. Emotional level it enables to methodically improve and sensitize the emotions. Spiritual level, it helps to move towards the causal state of mind by introspection and the inner dimensions of personality to open out and be manifested. Applications of Yoga As stated earlier, Yoga is actually a development of self. Our attitudes, intelligence and conduct reflect our sense of self. Through various yogic asanas, pranayama and meditation, the body, 
the physical, mental, intellectual, emotional and spiritual level are properly nurtured which leads to human quality development. It increases self-esteem, self-confidence. Yoga is an efficient and controlled way to life. For human quality development, it has applications in student life, personal life, professional life. Let's talk about student life. The main problem with the children today is that they sit for hours for studying but still remember hardly anything because their mind is not still and does not remain concentrated on learning the lessons. Due to the practice of different asanas of yoga and pranayama, the breathing becomes long and deep. They become able to focus their attention on a particular spot. When such focused mind is applied to studies, it can grasp the concepts of lessons very fast and in a better way. Hence, yoga improves our learning and attention. When the students who practice yoga goes for examinations, their mind is calm and focused. So an unexpected question does not worry them. Personal life. The relationships in a human life play a very important role in bringing joy and happiness. Where the relationships are broken or hurt, it develops the pain and grief. The friends, family members and colleagues are part of our personal life. When we practice yoga, the mind becomes calm and stable and cooperation replaces competition. We learn to give more and take less and feel happy to give selfless love to others. We give preference to the inner qualities of a human being while making new friends. Preachers of yoga say that we should be happy for the progress and happiness of others. There should not be any place for hate and envy in our mind and practice. It is not worth spending our precious energy and time to the bad conduct. Practicing yoga regularly helps us to develop a habit of giving a positive response to even a negative situation that is making a person emotionally intelligent. The importance of health is as important as relationships in one's life. The imbalances in life and activities affect our physical and mental systems. Asans, pranayam and meditation help us to free ourselves from negativity and strengthen our body which ultimately leads to a good healthy life. Applications in professional life. Nowadays people are spending most of their time at their workplace. We ourselves are responsible for creating a positive and healthy environment in our surroundings. Most of the people complain about boredom, clock watching, politics and fights between colleagues and management at their workplace. But when we focus on our work and develop our attitude to give others rather than thinking what we can gain from others, it helps us to bring positivity and develop healthy environment. Right posture, deep breathing and stretching will help us to release stress and be relaxed during our hectic schedule of working. Bhagavad Gita says that the art of doing work in an excellent way without expecting fruit of that work is yoga. 
Muniyati tradition. This Muniyati tradition is believed to be primarily followed in pre-Vedic period by non-Aryans and was one of the specific patterns of life and thought. Some of the characteristics of Muniyati tradition are popularity of Shiva religion and its practices, glorifying the way of life through renunciation, self-discipline and strictness. Idol worship was the main feature of this tradition. Rituals and offerings to the idol of God were the most important part of Muniyati tradition. Yoga practices like meditation, focus and control on mind and heart also were the main features of this tradition. Thus things like concentration, mental strength were defined very early in our Indian tradition. Practicing yoga, meditation can develop immense potential and vigor in an employee working in the organization. Idol worship was a symbolic way to express deep faith in the posit positivity of the concerned God. This is same like mentorship or body system, role models adopted in the organization. The subordinate employee who has freshly joined the organization is very vulnerable and is like a Gili Mitti. So, if the employee gets the good mentor, the employee can flourish. The senior can become the role model and this process will also be helpful in succession planning. So, let us now talk about story of Eklavya. Since ages, the story of Eklavya, a character from the Indian epic Mahabharata, has come to define exemplary discipleship. Eklavya was a son of a poor hunter. He wanted to learn archery to save the deer in the forest that were being hunted by the leopards. So he went to Dronacharya, a master of advanced military arts, and requested him to teach him archery. Dronacharya was the teacher of the royal family. In those days, as a rule, a teacher of the members of the royal family was not supposed to teach the state art to anybody else. It was forbidden to make anyone as powerful as the princes for the safety of the region. But Eklavya deeply desired to study under Dronacharya. Dronacharya, bound by the state law, could not accept him as his student. Eklavya in his heart had already accepted Dronacharya as his guru. So consequently, after reaching home, he made a sculpture of his guru Dronacharya. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar describes that over the following years with sincerity, practice and by worshipping the statue of his guru, he learned archery and became better than the state princes at this art. He became so good at it that even if he would hear the sound of the animal, he could shoot an arrow at it and claim the animal. Therefore, this tradition talks about the belief and power of idol worship which is even prevalent today. Rishi tradition is believed to be primarily followed in the pre-Vedic period by Vedic people also known as Aryans. The characteristics of this tradition were, it believed in essentially safe, sound and prosperous life. Home, which means offering to God through fire was a prevalent practice. Dandekar in 1981 explained that the Vedic religion never believed in private or individual God. The idol worship was entirely unknown at that time. It consisted of hymns in praise of various deities who are personifications of different powers of nature like water, fire, wind, sun, etc. The Rishi traditions have depicted the need and utilization of resources 
to run the organization with profit. There were hymns which described charms for curing diseases, prayers for long life and health, imprecations against demons and enemies, charms pertaining to women to secure their love, etc. This can be related to the organization's vision, mission, written rules of governance and their implementation. Various policies are made in the organization for the welfare of the employees related to health and their establishment. Everything is written down in manuals and is referred regularly for its implementation. This is how the Rishi tradition is still followed today in management with a different perspective but with a similar vision of welfare. Gandhian tradition. Gandhian tradition works as a strong pillar and it frames the foundation for the betterment of life, society, country and of world at large. Gandhian tradition mainly focuses on education, non-violence, practicing before preaching, contentment and trusteeship. Let's talk about education. In the Gandhian constructive program, the most important element is Nai Talim or the new education. Gandhiji regarded his scheme of education as spearheading the silent social revolution. Gandhiji believed that education should be intimately related to human experience. He said, what better book can there be than the book of humanity? Nonviolent methodology. Gandhiji said, Hinsa means causing pain or killing anyone's life out of anger or for a selfish purpose. Refraining from doing so is Ahimsa. This Ahimsa or non-violence methodology is again very important for good governance. The practice of non-violence needs the patience of highest magnitude. The calmness of heart depends upon the heart that is freed from anger and ego. All religions say that anger is the worst enemy of man. It obstructs the heart to achieve steadfast wisdom. Anger captivates the mind and destroys all knowledge. Practicing before preaching. Gandhi was a transformational leader. He followed the principle of practice before you preach. And so the learning for good governance is to be the change you want to see in the world. This quote of Gandhi is probably the most important and famous that Gandhi has ever said. It has inspired millions of people worldwide as you need to be the change you want to see in the workplace. Whatever change you might want, it is important that you stand up and do it and then expect from others to do the same. One of the Gandhi's most important lesson was that of tolerance and understanding. Throughout our lives, we will be in workplaces with people we really don't like many times. Gandhi asked the people to hate the sin and not the sinner. He urges to develop love for the person instead of hate and it will bring a great change. Gandhiji said, there is enough in this world for everybody's need, not for everybody's greed. People should be happy and content with what they have. They should not be greedy as their greediness for materialistic things can be harmful for themselves as well as for other beings. Trusteeship. As a visionary, he realized that the real strength of India lies in communal harmony and brotherhood. He worked on the idea of trust and trusteeship, which says that wealth should be earned for the welfare of all 
and not for the profit motive of oneself. Gandhiji's concept of trusteeship is one of the pillars of good governance which was wholeheartedly followed by Jamnalal Bajaj, an industrialist. Gandhi himself said, Jamnalal Bajaj's life was a live example of that concept. When he died, he gave away his personal wealth and also his own share in the joint family business to various public causes. In today's era, where every other day we see a corporate scandal, Jamlanal Bajaj and Gandhi have left a message of good governance to the corporate world. The reason for our fears and cowardice in our excessive greed, as Jamlanal Bajaj said, that if we do our business in accordance with an accepted code of ethics, we will win not only the sympathy but the respect of the society and the country. According to Gandhi, trusteeship is about economic equity between the classes or among the masses. Trusteeship is about welfare of others and trusteeship is about common good. Confluence tradition. The confluence tradition talks about flowing of different ideas together. It is a meeting point of various thoughts. The light of these positive thoughts gives us the energy and warmth to live our life while performing social welfare. It is rightly said by Lord Krishna in Gita that those who confluence their flaws and accept it become intelligent. Once we meet with our own flaws and accept it, we always try to improve it and which is most important role is that in changing and improving performing well for ourselves as well as our society. As our lives are gathered by society with people living in it, it becomes our foremost responsibility and duty to save humanity in it. As we do not only live for ourselves, but live in our society also. It is said by Lord Krishna, those who always live in our own sorrow and grief become weak. And those who live by connecting and empathizing with the grief of society become brave and strong. It is always the welfare of other people that should be our topmost priority and aim of our lives to meet the best of ourselves and rising up our positive soul. Connecting noble thoughts. As it is said in Rig Veda, let the noble thoughts come to us from all directions. Therefore, it is a multi-flowing process where the various noble thoughts mix from every part of society and the world to lead to a holistic development of individuals. Thus, uniting with our own selves, our society and tradition helps in meeting with our own satisfactional needs towards our life and most importantly, God. The golden traditions have always helped us in imparting logical and philosophical thought and facts about living our lives to the fullest by making productive use of it. With this culture, the new era of western culture is also spreading its roots day by day in India. This era spreads the message of convergence between east and west where the West has adopted some noble thoughts like simplicity and respect from the East and East has adopted some other noble thoughts from the West. Life tradition that is liberation from exploitation tradition. Liberation terms here depicts a mood of freedom and independence. 
it is the removal of restrictions on something which is hindering you from seeing the unseen to feel that feeling which has never been felt before to move on those paths which are meant to be walked on to move in any such direction which is unusual in the eyes of the society but is worth moving forward as your inner conscience says this is right when we see the relationship of exploitation with liberation this comes out to be great liberalization is the freedom on the other hand exploitation is a powerful force that owns selfish motives for gaining profits these motives are highly hazardous for the one who easily comes into the trap of exploitation the examples of exploitation are child exploitation exploitation of women rights third gender rights etc using a minor child for profit power status sexual gratification or some other purpose creates mental injury this is when children's morals get ruined unfortunately there is a large market involved in these businesses and are interested in using the children and other weaker sections of the society for cheap dealings women in ancient india were held in high respect with the course of time the status of women got lowered early marriages rape molestation sexual harassment forced prostitution eve teasing etc are common issues today the crime rate against women is mounting at a startling rate the life tradition the stocks about the concerns for the oppressed and the works on the notion of survival of the weakest where the need is to uplift the weaker section so the whole society can be developed arth shastra tradition arth shastra tradition is based on the teachings of kautilya at his time india was divided into many kingdoms and so he wished to make india unified which he called as akhand bharat kautilya's ideas are even relevant today as his vision and thoughts were at the forefront of that time kautilya's arth shastra provides the following guidelines for duty of a king or leader balancing power communication skills decision making balancing power kautilya says that one of the vital tools of a leader is to make people responsible for their work if they perform well reward them and if they do not perform punish them but this is not the case what we see in today's environment sometimes it happens that people who are working well are overburdened and more punished more and the people who are not working well are able to get away with their non performance also it creates hostility and dissatisfaction in the high performers and they quit the job thus kautilya advised leaders to use power in the balanced way which can provide happiness and prosperity to employees decision making the proper fast and effective decision making helps organizations grow in short as well as in long term kautilya said a good leader should never postpone decisions and should make fast and effective decisions communication skills communication is again an important skill for developing human quality and for developing organizations to improve this skill people even attend the workshops and seminars kautilya said that these workshops and seminars are not enough to improve the skills of communication rather open communication system is required 
at the organizational level for the betterment of communication. Horizontal communication channels improve when people will open up and share their views with each other. Vertical communication channel improves when leaders are ready to listen to the queries and respond to them. This is how people learn and value best practices of communication. Healing tradition. The healing tradition is related to the oldest form of holistic treatment in Indian society that is based on the set principles and philosophy developed by our ancestors. It is the initial form of medication which actually which gradually developed. The healing was through control of mind, body and medication through ingredients of plants and other substances. The advanced medical knowledge has come to the modern times through the long developmental process of trial and error. And the exchange of knowledge, the experience between various communities and regions. Today, as well, the ancient Indian healing tradition is alive in the form of Ayurveda, Yunani and Siddha. The important aspect today is to integrate the finest of all the healing traditions to meet the healthcare needs of modern society. Healing tradition. What are the characteristics of traditional healing practices? Healing tradition is composed of sacred therapies, holistic approach, healers as diviners and Ayurveda. Sacred therapies. It involves different processes of healing involved through different forms of the sacred entities. But many of them had physical and hypothetical forms. Spirits, demons and devis are the major part of sacred type of therapies. For example, in some temples of Devi, the devotees are expected to offer wine or a particular type of leaven. In few of them, the patients are supposed to enter the te temple crawling or lying. Holistic approach. The holistic approach aims at the overall well-being of the person. It considers the body, individual and society within the framework of the treatment. The healers know about the close mutual relationship between the body and mind. The body is not healthy when the mind is sick. The stressed mind impact on the body parts and the health drops. In such techniques, the treatment is done on overall body part instead of a specific part. For example, at the Balaji temple in Ayodhya, holy water is the standard treatment for all who come for relief. Healers as diviners. The healers in such techniques have the ability to host a deity or spirit and under such time they acquire supernatural powers to control the thought process of patients and to heal them. The healer is the medium through which the patients can interact with the deities and spirits. The healers need long years of preparations to acquire such powers to control the body and mind of others. Such healers work without any incentive and it is believed that if they charge money, their power to connect will go away. Ayurveda Sanskrit is known as the language of Vedas and ancient culture. The early work of Ayurveda was to deal with a specific branch of medical practice. Later, the practice of Ayurvedic healing continued to be expanded and refined over the period of time. The main source of Ayurvedic medicine was the plants and trees. The cowherds, hunters and forest dwellers were helpful to procure medicinal plants. Now as well, the traditional way of the Ayurvedic healing technique is continued. The government has opened many colleges to impart the knowledge of Ayurvedic healing techniques to the youth. Many research centers have been opened to take 
Ayurveda in the modern world. Spirituality tradition. Spirituality is the important key for the Indian mind. Swami Vivekananda, one of the greatest persons of India, became world famous for his address at the world's parliament of religions at Chicago. This speech introduced the Indian great culture and spirituality to the world. After the parliament, he spent nearly three and a half years spreading Vedanta philosophy as taught and practiced by Sri Ramakrishna Paramahans mostly in the eastern parts of USA and London. In fact, from ancient times, the spirituality and mystical charm of India have always drawn people from all over the world to India. With the focus of money and leisure, the world is increasingly becoming materialistic and capitalistic. Therefore, the requirement of spirituality is growing day by day. Many spiritual leaders and saints have delivered the message of harmony, union and love that is ingrained in our Indian spiritual tradition. Yoga and Ayurveda tradition have played an important role in the evolution and development of spiritual culture in India. For the development of spiritual culture, many ashrams and centers of excellence have come up in the entire country. These centers have played a vital role in spreading the spiritual traditions of India. The main aim of such centers is to develop the quality in humans and to teach how to respect all living beings including trees, water, animals and thus leading to a positive attitude towards healthy life. In modern times, the spirituality has also been connected with the workplace. Workplace spirituality. The employees are spending most of their time at the workplace with co-workers and the social life is also limited to the colleagues. Therefore, the harmony in relationship with colleagues is important. Workplace spirituality has been defined both from the organizational and individual perspective. There are five different dimensions of workplace spirituality and all of them are interconnected. These are expressive work, perfection of self, interdependence, holistic growth and development of organizational values. Thus the spiritual tradition is prevalent from ancient to modern times. And similar to other traditions, this tradition too is relevant in all walks of our lives. So students, let's now summarize what we have studied in this module. The Indian thought traditions are of much value as they impart the value-based learning in each and every individual. The Sayadwat tradition talks about avoiding the confusion and to know the viewpoint of all so that correct and final conclusion can be drawn. Yoga tradition helps to develop humans at all five levels that is physical, mental, intellectual, emotional and spiritual. The Muniyati tradition expresses a deep faith in the positivity of the concerned God through idol worship. Gandhian tradition is a path of non-violence, trusteeship, contentment, non-possession, etc., which are again necessary for human quality development. Let the noble thoughts come to us from all directions. A quote from Rig Veda is symbolized in the confluence tradition as it works on the notion of the mingling of noble thoughts from all the sources. The ancient Indian healing tradition is alive in the form of Ayurveda, Yunani and Siddhi and other forms. The important aspect today is to integrate 
the finest of all the healing traditions to meet the healthcare needs of modern society. In modern times, the spirituality has been connected with the workplace. It is believed that the work is worship. Thus, spiritual tradition is helpful in this aspect. Kautalya's Archastra provides the guidelines for duty of a king or a leader. It talks about balancing power and right decision making. Thus, all the traditions are valuable and provide the lessons and guidelines towards human quality development. Thank you.